Hello, Dr. Todorova. My name is Brian. I'm here with my son. Do you give us permission to upload this video to YouTube? Yes. Okay, we're videotaping this here. The first part, uh, first thing I would do is wash my hands as we come into the room there. The first part of the exam is assessing his uh, level of consciousness. Of course, I'm looking to see is he alert? Does he have spontaneous eyes? Does his eyes open up spontaneously? Does he follow commands? Um, and of course, assessing the orientation. Factory and orientation, if he was orientated times four with those other factors, he would be on a Glasgow coma scale, he'd be a score of 15, which is really good. We're gonna ask him a series of questions, a few questions that assess his orientation. Um, first one is, uh, what's your name? Jaden Haas. Uh, where are you at? My house. Uh, let's see. What day is it? Saturday. And uh, why are you here? I'm helping my dad with his exam. Good, so he's orientated times four. So person, place, uh, time and situation. So he's orientated times four there. Um, the next part of the exam is, is evaluating and looking at his, uh, well, let's, let's see what his memory is like. So let's go into memory there. So let's do most recent memory. So what'd you have uh, for breakfast today? Cereal. Awesome, and then let's go back. Let's do a distant memory, a remote memory, as far back as you can. What can you remember? Um, when I was younger, I used to hide in our dryer because I was small enough while I was playing with my sisters. So Got it. Perfect. And then, um, so that's the memory there. And as he's talking, we want to see what his speech pattern is like. You know, is he, what's his speed is like? Is he projecting his voice really, really good? Uh, is he stuttering at all? Difficulty trying to find uh, words, uh, difficulty trying to find words. He's got a normal speech pattern here. The next part of the exam is, is seeing if he's got some uh, reasonability, if he's got some reason to him. Um, so we would ask him a question, a situational question like, let's say you're walking down the sidewalk and you, you saw an envelope that had a, a stamp on it and had uh, name and addresses to and from name and addresses. What would you do with that envelope? Put it in the mailbox. Perfect, so that's a reasonable answer there. So that was good, and that's, what, that's an appropriate answer for that question there or that situation. Uh, next part of the exam is we're gonna look at the cranial nerves. The first cranial nerve is uh, olfactory. Go ahead and close your eyes there. I would occlude one nostril and have Jaden sniff this and see if he can smell that. Pepper. Pepper, he says, and that's the correct answer there. And then we, of course, test the other nostril there. And what does that smell like? Cinnamon. Cinnamon, very good. So that's the cranial nerve number one, olfactory. The next uh, cranial nerve is the optic nerve. Doctor, I apologize. I left my Snell and I charted the, my office. I was doing physical exams on today on so, the football uh, players and cheerleaders, so I don't have that. But let's pretend like I do. The Snell and Art chart would be six feet away. I'd have the patient cover their right eye, read the bottom line, the uh, as, as far as they can, and, and I would mark that down, have them read across there and mark on it if it was 2020, 2015, 2040 vision. I'd then have them cover the other eye six feet away with the Snell and Eye chart, have them read that line there as well, mark that down with appropriate vision or the score, 2020, etc. And then, of course, do both eyes together six feet away. Same thing with writing down that number. If we were in the office, it would be 20 feet away with the Snell and Eye chart. The next uh, part of the exam I can do is uh, visual fields of, of, of confrontation. So what I'd do is I'd have him cover his right eye, I'd cover my left eye, and I'd basically, we're looking for his peripheral vision. Go ahead and tell me when I twitch my fingers here. Mm-hmm. 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 Cover the other eye. Mm-hmm. 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 Good, then I would do both eyes. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Point to it. Uh, say, uh, good. Good. So that's uh, visual fields of accommodation. We could also uh, check convergence there. I'd have him watch the, follow the tip of this marker there to see his eyes converge and see the pupils constrict his due. Um, with convergence there. The next part of the exam is using the ophthalmoscope and assessing, looking, uh, it's a fundoscopic exam here. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on. With this part of the exam, I would use my right eye to his right eye, stabilize his head with the opposite hand, 
uh, two fingers are holding it. I'm using these three fingers for protection and safety. And as I come in, I'm using right, right eye. Follow the red reflex all the way in there. We're looking at the red reflex, looking at the blood vessels, see if there's any AV nicking, any cotton wool spots, and we trace that over, follow that over to the optic disc. That disc to cup ratio should be one third to one half uh, when we're assessing that. And then looking at the other eye, we use uh, my left, we're looking at my left eye and his left eye, stabilized with the opposite hand. Safety with these three fingers to make sure it's not jamming into his eye there, we come in with my left eye, same thing, looking at the red reflex, looking for uh, an AV nicking, cotton wool spots, trace that over to the disc. That disc to cup ratio again should be one third to one half there. Uh, the next part of the exam uh, is we're going to uh, look at his, um, let's go to the next cranial nerve actually. Oh, we do, sorry. Same thing, we're with cranial nerve number two is optic. We're going to do a direct and consensual light reflex. Go ahead and look straight ahead there. We're going to look into his pupils there and see. We can see one uh, close off there. And then if we look at the same pupil, the other one should constrict, and that does. And we do the op opposite one there. We're going to look and see at that pupil there. That's the direct. And if we look at the opposite, that's the consensual light reflex. And I wanted to make note, when we do the it's really bright in here. When we do these exams, especially with the fundoscopic exam with the ophthalmoscope, the light would be dim so we could see the red reflex and the disc and, uh, and the optic nerve really well there. So the light would be dimmed for that purpose there. Um, the next uh, cranial nerve is cranial nerve number one. We're going to assess for the uh, cardinal fields of gaze, and that's cranial nerve number three, ocular motor number four. Uh, trochlear and then of course number six is abducens with ocular motor that's testing all the external uh, ocular movements except for medial lateral and then down um, ocular i mean um, cranial nerve number uh, four is trochlear that's assessing uh, medial and down the uh, oc the ocular or eye movements medial and down and then number six cranial nerve number six is assessing the lateral movements of the eye there. So with the uh, with those six cardinal fields there, we're just going to have the patient trace this marker here, and we're looking for and seeing if he's got any nystagmus, which is involuntary movements of the eye. He traces really good in all of those patterns there. Of course, I'd go like that all the way up. Good and good there and then the uh the next cranial nerve is the mm -hmm. trigeminal the trigeminal has three branches there it branches off right up here into the forehead here then we got the the cheek and then the jaw there so we want to test all three with sharp versus dull we're going to take a um a uh, q-tip <laughs> and we're going to see if he can tell the difference bilaterally, right, right and left, in all three um, centers there. The forehead, the, uh, the cheek, and then the jaw there. So you tell me if it's sharp or dull there. Dull, sharp, dull, sharp, sharp, dull, sharp, dull, sharp. Great. So the trigeminal nerve um, there is we're also gonna we're also gonna check to see his jaw. Let's see if we'll open up his jaw there. There's a trigeminal nerve there. Good. So so we got three, four, and six. Uh cranial nerve number five is um, the uh, facial, sorry, the facial nerve. So we want to look at the facial nerve there. And to assess the facial nerve, we're going to have the patient, uh, what we do is have the patient uh, frown, there you go. Raise the eyebrows there, you can see them go like that. Go ahead and smile, there you go. And then puff out your cheeks, good. That's cranial nerve number five there and facial. And then the next nerve is cranial nerve, um, I fucked that up. <sighs> so long 
up the membranes. Ocular motor, trochlear, and why did I say trigeminal? Hello, Dr. Todoroga. My name is Brian Haas. I'm here with my son. Uh, do you give us permission to go ahead and videotape this neuro exam and upload it to YouTube? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then what we do is we first start off, of course, we wash our hands before we came into the room. As we come into the room, we we're trying to assess his level of consciousness. We're looking to see, does his eyes open spontaneously? Does he follow commands, yes or no? Um, is he alert? And what's his uh, orientation? Um, if he's oriented times four with those other components, he would be on a Glasgow coma scale, a score of 15, which is awesome. So assessing his orientation, we're going to ask him a few questions. The first is, uh, what's your name? Jaden. Uh, where are you at? My house. Uh, what day is it? Saturday. And uh, why are you here? I'm helping my dad with his exam. Good. So he's oriented times four, and that's awesome person, place, time, situation, or event. Uh, the next part, and as he's talking, we want to um, assess his speech. What's his speech like? Is it, is it pronounced? Is he, is, is he uh, vocal with his speech? The, the pitch of it? The speed of it? Uh, is he slurring his words? Is he have difficulty remembering his words, etc.? He's got a normal speech pattern, which is awesome. The next part of this exam is we want to assess his memory. Let's do uh, short-term memory, uh, recent memory. Uh, let's ask them a question like, what'd you have for breakfast? Um, cereal. Awesome, and then so remote memory is a distant memory, the most distant memory you can, re memory you can remember, what, what would that be? Um, I remember I used to hide in our dryer in the other room, right. which was like a hiding spot. How old were you? I'm like five. Awesome, uh, I can attest to that because I remember that. Uh, the next part is just testing his reasonability uh, to a situation or event, let's say. Let's say you're walking down the sidewalk and you see an envelope on the sidewalk and it's got a stamp on it and it's got a to and from names and uh, addresses to and from. What would you do with that envelope? Put it in the mailbox. That's a reasonable answer. That seems like uh, something that I would do as well, so that's good. Um, the next part of the exam is we're going to uh, assess his cranial nerves. I want you to to uh, close your eyes there. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory. We're going to close off one nostril and see if you can smell this. Pepper. Good. And we're going to close off the other nostril, see if you can smell this. Cinnamon. Good. So that's uh, olfactory. The next uh, nerve is cranial nerve number two. That's the optic nerve. I want to apologize, Dr. Totorova. I forgot my snow and eye chart at the office. I was doing physical exams on uh, the athletes from the high school football and cheerleading athletes there. Uh, but if I had the Snell and I chart, I'd hold it. I have a pocket one. I'd hold it six feet away. I'd have the patient close off their right eye and I'd have them read the bottom, the most bottom line that they could read. And as they could read that, I'd make note what the vision was. Was it 2020, 2040, 2015? I'd switch eyes six feet away with the same Snell and I chart. Same thing, read that mark and note what the vision was there and then lastly Snell and I chart six feet away with both eyes mark and make note of the vision there if I was in the office it would be 20 feet away um, measuring the vision there with the optic nerve uh, the next part is let's we can do uh, is the fields of uh, visual fields of confrontation so we're assessing his peripheral vision go ahead and cover your right eye, I cover my left eye. I would, I'm gonna have you uh, let me know when I wiggle my, my fingers here in these different, say yes or? Yes. 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 Good, cover the other eye. I'd cover, he's covering his left, I'd cover my right. So let's do that again. Yes. 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 Good, now we assess both eyes here. Tell me if it's the right or left here, which one's wiggled? Right. Left, left, right, good. Now let's do it again. Left, right, good. And then, um, so that's, that's testing all of the peripheral vision there. And then uh, next part of the exams, we wanna use the ophthalmoscope. Uh, We're checking, this is a fundoscopic exam. The lights would be dimmed in this part of the exam there. As I turn this on, 
I would use my right eye to his right eye, stabilizing his head with my opposite hand here. Two fingers holding it and three fingers stabilizing it for protection to make sure this is not jammed into his eye there. Using my right eye to look into that, we're trying to look at the cardinal fields. I'm sorry, we're looking at the red reflex, looking and seeing uh, the red reflex, the, the uh, blood vessels there for any AV nicking, cotton wool spots. We trace that over to see um, what the disc and the cup looks like and see what that ratio is. It should be less one to three to one half there. And then we do uh, the other side, we stabilize with the right. And using my left eye, we're following that in using three hands or three fingers for protection or safety. Follow that in with my left eye, red reflex, same thing. Uh, in the AV nicking, cotton wool spots, trace that over at the disc and the cup and that ratio, the marking down that ratio. Again, one third to one half there. The other part of the exam is we want to look and see as if pupils and we'll see if they react direct and consensual light reflex there. So I'm going to shine this into his, uh, his, his uh, pupil there. That, could, could, that should constrict on the same side. And then I shine it there and that should constrict on the opposite side there. And that does, that's consensual light reflex. And if I follow that over direct on this side there, looking at the pupil constrict, and then go over there and looking to see if the opposite one constricts and that does there. The next part of the exam is looking at cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. 3 is ocular motor, looking at uh, 4 is uh, trochlear, and then 6 is abducens. So these are the cardinal fields of gaze there. Uh, cranial nerve 3 pretty much is looking at all the external ocular movements except for a medial, lateral, and down. Uh, the trochlear nerve assesses and evaluates the ocular movements, both uh, medial and down. And then the uh, abducens nerve is assessing the ocular movements lateral there. So we want to assess and look at the cardinal fields of gaze, have the patient follow the tip of this marker here. We want to see if there's any nystagmus, how he's following any uh, pursuits. We're looking to see how his eyes are pursuing and looking for any uh, involuntary movements uh, called nystagmus there. And that's good there. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Next part of the exam is the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve has three branches. So a branch goes up to his forehead, to his cheek, and then his jaw there. We want to assess all three. We have a uh, cotton tip, um, Q-tip here. So we have dull and sharp. You tell me where and it's dull and sharp as I touch your forehead here. On both sides we're doing this. Dull, sharp, 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 dull, sharp, dull, sharp, dull. Good. So we, we checked all three levels there. Uh, next thing is going to open up your jaw there. Okay, that's good there. So we checked... Uh, Three, four, and six. Uh, we check the uh, the trigeminal nerve here. The next is cranial nerve number seven, which is the uh, facial nerve. With the facial nerve, we're going to have him uh, frown or squint his forehead there. Raise your eyebrows there. Good. Then go ahead and smile. So the the facial nerves have the upper and lower division there. And then go ahead and puff out your cheeks. So obviously we frowned his forehead, that's the upper division, then we just assessed the lower division there. The next uh, cranial nerve we want to check is the vestibular cochlear, and that is, we're going to do a whisper test, so we're going to close off one ear on this side, come behind him a couple feet, we're going to say a couple words, whisk, this is the whisper test. High school. Go ahead and repeat that. High school. Good, and we're going to close off this one here. Football. Right, so a two syllable words, high school and then football. He got that uh, there, of course. And then the next uh, part of the vestibular cochlear uh, test, we're, cranial nerve is we're testing the Weber's test. So we're going to strike the tuning fork, place it in the forehead there. Do you hear the sound equally in both ears? Mm -hmm. Good, and that should, that's normal. If it lateralizes to one ear, he could have a sensory neural loss on that one side there. The next uh, part of this exam is Renee's test. I call it Renee's. Some people say Ryan's 
Uh, what we do is we strike it again, strike it again, put it on the mastoid process, wait until he can't hear that anymore. Tell me when you can't hear that. Can you hear it still? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now we can hear uh, air conduction was greater than bone conduction. That's normal. And then we repeat this on the opposite side, uh, do it on both sides. Air conduction should be greater than bone conduction there. That's Renee's test uh, there. Uh, okay, the next part of the exam is the we're going to assess the uh, uh, glossopharyngeal and the uh, vagus uh, nerves. So what we're going to do is we're going to have them open up. Open up your yeah. mouth. Open up your mouth. We're looking at when we ask the patient to say ah, say ah. Uh, We're seeing the uvula rise there, and then go ahead and swallow there. Let's see you swallow. Swell. Go ahead and swallow. I can't swallow with my. Okay, go ahead and swallow. Open up again. Good. So that's the glossum pharyngeal and the vagus nerve there, and then uh, okay, very good there. And then the next part or the next uh, cranial nerve there is the um, hypoglosso, or sorry, the accessory nerve, which is 11. Uh, so we did 9, 10, vagus is 10, and then the accessory nerve is testing his uh, trap muscles there. Go ahead and lift your, elevate your traps there. Good, and we also want to check the SCMs on the right side here. Go ahead and go against resistance there, against resistance there. It's testing the SCMs on both sides. That's the accessory nerve. The last one's the hypoglosso. Uh, go ahead and stick your tongue out there. Good. Now, uh, so we want to see if it's midline there. With the uh, glossopharyngeal, the uvula should raise and it should raise uh, midline there, and the tongue should uh, come out centered there, and it does. Okay. Put your tongue into this cheek here. Good. Tongue into this cheek there. Awesome. So we're finished with the uh, hypoglossal there. That concludes the cranial nerves. Then let's go into. And we're going to we're going to assess the uh, cerebellum later on because I have to hold the the camera there and we'll follow that. The next part of the exam is we're going to assess uh, position sense. So if I take your finger, close your eyes there. Close your eyes. I'm going to take your finger. You tell me if I'm bending it or if I'm pushing it down or up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So down, up, up, down. Good. Let's do this one. Up, down, up. Okay, get your, and then we'll do also, we're going to assess his toes there. Close, so eyes. close your eyes. Let's do it with your toes. Is it going down or up? Down, up. Good. The other one? Down, up. Good. So that's position sense there. Uh, the next one is we're going to do uh, two point discrimination there. Close your eyes. When I touch you, you got to tell me if there's one point or two points when I touch you. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we'll do upper extremity here. Let's go here. Two points. Good. Two points. That's one. <laughs> oh. That's two points. Good. And let's do that again. One point. Good. And let's test this side. Two points. One point. Two points. Good. Let's do the lower extremity. Two points. One point, two points, good, two points, one point, two points, one point. Good, so that's that was good there. Next one is the stereognosis. We're going to put, close your eyes. Mm -hmm. We're going to put something in his hands. He's got to see if he can recognize this object there. Coin. Good. That's a coin there. Awesome. The next part of the exam is we're going to assess his upper and lower, uh, so the the cutaneous sensation we want to see, and we want to see if he can also uh, identify any painful stimulation. So we have the cutaneous, the uh, sup, um, uh, the the surface of the superficial uh, cutaneous stimulation, superficial painful stimulation. There. So I have a. Uh, Tissue. A tissue, and I have a uh, paper clip. You tell me if it's cute, uh, if it's tissue or paper clip. Close your eyes there. Tissue, paper clip, tissue, paper clip, 
tissue. Paper clip. Yeah. Tissue. Lower extremity. Paper clip. Tissue. Paper clip. Paper clip. Tissue. Tissue. Awesome. So we got that there. Excellent. Okay. The next part uh, of the exam is we're going to um, we're gonna. That's part that finishes the uh, sensory. Now we want to do the motor part there. So we're gonna check his motor strength there. Put your arms up like this here. We're checking the deltoids. Hold strong there. Good. Put your arms up like this. We're checking, testing the triceps, biceps. Good. And then we want to check the. Uh, I don't know if you can see here. Bring your up leg. Go ahead and kick forward for me. That's his quad. Pull back there. That's his hamstring there. Do this one. Uh, kick up, that's his quad, pull back, that's his hamstring. Well, that's, then we want to test the uh, abductors and abductors of his hip. Go ahead and push close there, that's his adductors, and then external rotation of the hip is the abductors there. That's really good there. So we've got some really good strength, it should be 5 plus, and his are all 5 plus there. Uh, the next part of the exam is um, we want to check and see um, Oh, we want to check the strength of his uh, fingers. We want to see what's his uh, grip strength. Let's do grip strength. Go ahead and squeeze my hands there. Ow, okay, he's, he's pretty strong. He squeezed them pretty tight there. <laughs> All right, close your fingers off. Go like this. Okay, uh, don't let me open up your fingers there. We're testing his finger strength there. Those are all good. Okay, awesome. Now open up your fingers. Now I'm gonna try to pinch them together there. I'm gonna try to pinch them together, pinch them together there. Good, he's got really strong fingers. He works out quite a bit there. He almost crushed my uh, my hands there with his grip strength there. Pretty strong kid. Um, okay, the next part of the exam is we're checking uh, reflexes. So if we test his uh, reflexes, if we can test his uh, biceps reflex there. So we're gonna hold this here. And if we press into the biceps, hold the tendon there and just strike it. Strike it, it's, yeah, there's a nice little twitch there. That's the biceps. We hold the triceps there. Let your, let your arm just dangle there. We're gonna strike the triceps. Good, awesome. This side here, biceps here. We're gonna come into the biceps and just strike that. Good, triceps there. Hold that. Good, and then we're gonna use the patella here. I don't know if you can see this, the patella. We're striking the patella on the right cool. side. That was a nice kick. Uh, left side there. And then we come on down, let's see here, maybe you can put your leg up here, Jaden. And we want to test the Achilles there. We're striking the Achilles there to see if we get a nice little plantar flex, and we do. Good, the other one. We're checking the Achilles there. Good, let's put this one up. Now we're checking the Babinski reflex. We're gonna use the uh, reflex hammer and strike the ball. Uh, we're going to scrape the bottom of his feet and his toes should curl and then they do. That's a normal response. In infants less than a year old, they'll, they'll flare up. Do this one here. Okay. Good. Go like that. And that comes down there like that. Awesome. Let's now test some do some cerebellar tests there. Uh, let's have him see what kind of coordination this young man has. I want you to go like that as fast as you can. Good. That's good. He's testing his coordination. For cerebellum, the back part of this brain, it controls his balance and coordination. Now I want you with this finger here, touch your nose and then touch my finger. But once you touch your nose, you can reach and look at my finger and touch it. Good. Different areas here. Good. Other one. Good. And then one more here. Awesome, so we got that. Okay, the next part of the exam is, um, we did all that, we did the reflexes. Um, we wanna continue with the cerebellar exam. Uh, you know, we have to turn the light on there. Actually, we can do it right here. We're gonna have him um, walk. We're gonna see him, uh, actually, actually, let's have him stand first. We're gonna stand and we're gonna have to test to see what uh, what is his, um, See if he has, has any pronator drift to his, as he stands there, close your eyes there. Mm -hmm. Good. As he stands there, he should not, his hand should not go into pronation. If I slap him down like that, 
um, they should stay they should come back up to, to normal there so that's normal the next part of the exam is we're going to have him walk and it, we're going to check his uh, his gait as we check his gait um, let me do that. Let's have him walk there. Let's see here. Jaden, you're going to walk across the kitchen there. And we're checking his gait to see. Go ahead and walk forward. And walk backwards. Turn around. Backwards? No. Okay, come towards me again. We're checking his... Uh, turn face, face me. Face me. Mm-hmm. We're just checking his gait to see. Okay, good. And backwards there. Checking to see his balance, to see he's got balance there. He's coordinated there. Uh, do a tandem walk for you to go heel, toe, heel, toe. Yep, like that. He's got good balance there. Good. And then we're going to do is walk on your heels. Go, go, go back, go forward and walk on your heels. Heels, heels. Oh, heels. Walk on your heels. And then walk on your toes. Go forward on your toes. Okay, good. And then I think, let's see, that is it. Um, That concludes the exam. Thank you so much for Dr. Todorova.